Welcome back to another Valley Sports Club Arizona Cardinals Week 10 Recap. It's November 13th, 2022, and the Arizona Cardinals were in Los Angeles this week taking on the Rams. The final score of this one was 27 to 17, the Cardinals taking the win. Let's look at some of the stats from today's game. Colt McCoy in for the injured Kyler Murray. He completed 26 of 37, 238 yards, one touchdown, and zero interceptions. DeAndre Hopkins with 10 receptions for 98 yards. Rondale Moore had nine receptions for 94 yards. And James Conner, 21 carries with 69 yards and two touchdowns. Antonio Hamilton would have 10 solo tackles on the defensive side, and Buda Baker with a huge interception for a 53-yard return. Cardinals with a total of three team sacks. On the other side, former Arizona hotshot John Walford for the Rams, 24 completions on 36 attempts, 212 yards with one touchdown and that interception to Buda Baker. Tyler Higby had eight receptions for 73 yards. Allen Robinson, four receptions for 44 yards. And Van Jefferson, son of Arizona Cardinals wide receiver coach Sean Jefferson, had one touchdown, three receptions, and 27 yards. The kicker, Tristan Vizcanow, had a pair of... <laughs> what? We, do, we looked that up, too. We even looked that up. <laughs> well, I already forgot what it was. Vizcaino. Vizcaino. I'm sorry. Vizca I yeah, I don't know. Kicker Tristan <laughs> Vizcaino. Vizcaino. Oh, However you man. want to pronounce Hey, he got signed yesterday, but he, he had a good game. He had a pair of field goals <laughs> and a pair of extra points as well. Chris Olave. Chris Olave. Chris Olave. <laughs> Uh, the, the New Orleans Saints did lose to the Pittsburgh Steelers today, 20-10. to 10. Uh, You might be able to see down there in the ticker. So just a little look at the scoring breakdown from today. For the Rams, kicker Matt Gay would start it off with a 36-yard field goal, opening up a 3-0 lead for the Rams. But that didn't last long as Vizcaino made his own 36-yard field goal to tie it up 3-3. Three to three. In the second quarter, James Conner ran in his first touchdown for four yards, making it 10-3. to three. A.J. Green would haul in another touchdown later on in the second quarter, making it 17-3 going into the half. Coming out of the third quarter, Daryl Henderson Jr. would run it into the end zone on a four-yard dash, making it 17-10. In the fourth quarter, James Conner would run in a nine-yard touchdown, 24-10 Cardinals. Tristan Vizcaino would, with a 46-yard field goal, making it 27-10, the last Cardinals score there. And in a last-ditch effort, Van Jefferson, with seven seconds left, would score a three-yard touchdown from John Wofford, making the final score 27-17. to Like I said, Arizona Cardinals getting the victory this week and now extending their record to 4-6. and six. So I want to pass it over to VSP Tallman first for his reaction on today's performance. Kyler who? What? Dude, we're going to hear all this crazy shit, especially when Kyler comes back and he lays an egg next week. Just kidding. He he might not do that. Hats off to Colt McCoy. Oh, my goodness. I mean, we talked about it before this whole week. It was like, you don't need a $230 million quarterback to run Cliff's offense. Colt McCoy can do it. And look what happened. Um, just playing. I think Colt did a great job filling in. We are watching the game and Dude, they started off the game 10 passes in a row. It wasn't a single rush. It was 10 passes in a row with your backup quarterback against a divisional uh, rival. It's like incredible. He did an outstanding job. That was great to see. I like to see that they actually uh, went back to the run a little bit towards the end of the game. James Conner with those two touchdowns, I think that's really good. Man, I can't believe Colt pulled it off. And for us to be 17-3 to three at halftime, it was like, what? Like, what was, have, we in, have we been in that position at all with Kyler this year? We have not, right? Um, so that was no. great to see. Weird game going into it. I was like, of course he's not going to play. I thought this was a game that we had to win, obviously. A game that we could steal. Like, if Kyler played, it was like, we win no matter what. So going in, it was kind of a toss-up. I didn't know what to expect. Very pleased, very pleased watching it. That Buda Baker, oh man, talking about somebody that played when he shouldn't have played. He gets a high ankle sprain. The coach rules him out on Monday. Like Cliff says he's not playing on Monday and he's in the game. He makes huge play. 
gets that pick, runs it back, what did you say, 56 yards. That was awesome. And then you sit there and think, okay, well, the leader of your team has a hamstring injury, and he's not going to play, but Buddha plays. So it's kind of like, okay, well, well, who wants it more? You know, it goes back to the whole hard knocks thing. You know, let's, you know, I challenge somebody. Somebody play harder than Buddha plays. No one can. So God bless that man's soul. Yeah, um, it was great. Great win. Four and six in the division. I, I, we're not in last place, guys. That's awesome. Not in last place. Um, if the Niners can lose tonight, everyone else loses. We get the only win out of the NFC West. I still think we I still still think the season's over, but I mean, who knows? I mean, we, what do we play the Niners next, right? Mm-hmm. So, so yep. I still think we we don't win a game against the Niners, but we're not completely out. But this was a good win. This was a good win for the fans. Good win for the city. And Cliff Kingsbury has one more week. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Cliff is fighting for his life. We continue to say that. And uh, Colt McCoy really helped him out today. Of course, the Rams are struggling as well. They're having their own issues. And John Walford is not Matthew Stafford, but we'll take the win. And I really did like personally seeing Colt McCoy playing smart, getting those passes out quickly, understanding who he was up against. He did get knocked around a bit by Aaron Donald from time to time, but overall really held his own. I like that he didn't turn the ball over. Really, really a good all-around performance for the offense. And the defense did did step up too. They did their job holding their own. Gave up a couple scores, but we'll take it if we get the win. So I, I, I am kind of team Colt. Coming in here tonight, I thought I would come on here and really bash Kyler Murray and be all team Colt McCoy and how he should take over. But honestly, if you really think about it, I think if Kyler Murray was playing, he would have won that game too. Would we have won by maybe even more? I don't know. It's hard to say. So if anything, I hope this motivates Kyler to know that maybe maybe he understands his job is secure because of the money, but maybe knowing that they can plug in Colt McCoy and have him be successful is a bit of an eye-opener and, and a wake-up call. Michael Benjamin, I want to know what you are thinking and what you saw today with the Cardinals and their performance. There were a lot of needs that happened today. We got our first division win of the year. Thank goodness. When we got to the red zone, we actually punched the ball in for scoring opportunities, getting touchdowns instead of field goals. And then we saw when they cut it down to a one possession lead when they scored and it was 17 to 10, the team went on a great drive and James Conner scored his second touchdown to put it basically kind of cement the game away. So there was a lot of things that this team needed to see that happened today, which was very, very good. At the end of the day, this game was a battle between two bad football teams. So you can't, you can't go too crazy with what you saw on the field. I I liked that D hop once again was heavily targeted this time. Rondell Moore got a little bit more involved. Once again, he's starting to solidify himself as a top tier receiver at least on this depth chart, right? You know, when Hollywood comes back, it's going to be those three guys, and those are going to be the focal points. Am I surprised of what Colt McCoy did today? No, because the Rams aren't very good. But also, we saw what he did last year when Kyler went down, and Colt McCoy came in, was very serviceable, and he's a 13-year veteran, so he knows what he's doing when he goes on the field. At this point, everything that's going on, you have to take the chunks of successes as you get and keep building upon them and moving forward, right? It's a game by game mentality. We're getting some things that needed to start off, go our way right now, if we have any kind of semblance of trying to make the playoffs. I mean, the Cowboys lost today, which isn't in our division, but that can have implications for, you know, wild card seeding. Everybody in our division lost today. The Seahawks lost. We beat the Rams, and hopefully the Niners will lose. We'll preemptively say it because this will be posted tomorrow on Monday. Get into existence. So, you know, they're driving right now, Mike. So, so those little things that we need to have a glimmer of hope to make the playoffs are still in play. But this season has been such a tragedy in regards to the expectations and what has happened. When you can finally scratch out a win. You're going to take it and you're going to be, you got to be a little bit happy about it because if we're always looking at the negatives, 
with our teams, especially the teams that we love, we're going to drive ourselves crazy. And the last thing that I have to say is we got our revenge back from last season in the playoffs, going to SoFi Stadium and pretty much handling business. I mean, I don't think they had over 200 yards until that last drive. So we completely controlled this game on the line of scrimmage. Our offense was smooth sailing, except for the one Billy Price little hiccup. I had to make sure to throw that in there God for you. God damn it, comment. Billy. But we'll take it, and it's on to the next one. I think this was absolutely a must win for the Cardinals. Uh, it's a bit of an eye roller, I guess, with the backup implication. But uh, like I said, a win is a win. Next week, I think, will be very, very interesting. It is a Monday night game in Mexico City, Aztec Stadium. The Cardinals are taking on the 49ers, and they're considered the home team. But we'll see. Hopefully, they play like they're an away team, because when they do that, they have a much better chance of winning than when they are the home team. So for Michael Benjamin, for VSP Tallman, I'm Chris Patrick. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Fuck you, Billy.